Hey everyone, Pastor Kerry here. Fresh wind is just three days away and we're believing for a life transforming time in God's presence. You know, in the past, times like this have been referred to as spiritual refreshing or renewal or even revival. And one of the historic traits of such times has been what the Bible refers to as signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Not those type of signs and wonders, but the kind of powerful supernatural things that have characterized great awakenings throughout history. Things that started way back in the the New Testament, like in Acts chapter 4, after Peter and John were released from prison for preaching about Jesus, and they came back and told the church what had happened and the threats against them. But instead of being shaken up, the believers prayed. And at the end of their prayer, it says in Acts chapter 4, verse 29, Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand, heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Notice that Jesus is the focus of the signs. And after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. You know, a lot of times we want to see the sign before we take action. If you're making a big life decision, you might say, God, show me a sign because uh, you want confirmation that he's in it before you step out and take the risk. But the early believers asked for boldness first. And when they put their faith into action, the signs followed. God doesn't want us to follow after signs because if we prioritize Christ and promote his purposes and put his word into practice, then the signs will follow us. But what does a sign really mean? And why does God give us signs? Well, we all know what signs are. We see them everywhere we go. Signs that advertise, signs that uh, tell us where we are, how to get where we want to go. Now, the sign itself is not the destination. It may point you in the right direction or indicate that you've arrived, but you don't see a sign and say, oh, that's awesome. I love that sign. That's everything I've been looking for in a sign. No, that, that would be crazy to get so caught up in the sign that you uh, turn off on the wrong road, miss your exit, and, and just totally miss where you're going. Now, if you're not sure where you're going, uh, somewhere you've never been before, what do you do? Well, most of us have come to rely on some form of GPS. You know, we bring up the Maps app Starting and that familiar voice comes God. on and that thick blue line highlights the path and gives us turn-by-turn -turn directions all the way to our destination. So who needs signs, right? Well, even with GPS, you still look for signs to know which road or exit to take or exactly where to turn because the signs confirm what the GPS told you so that you know exactly uh, which way you're going. Well, the Bible is like a GPS for life. It's the ultimate navigation system. It tells us where to go, how to get there. It keeps us going the right way if we follow it. But sometimes God still shows us signs along the way to encourage our faith and to reassure us that he's with us. And if a sign is truly from God, it will always agree with what he's already shown us in his word. Mark chapter 16 says that the disciples went out and preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. Notice again that they put their faith into action and then God confirmed that the message was true by supernatural signs. And what was the message? The message was Jesus. True signs from God are ultimately meant to point people to Christ because he's the only way worth following. In fact, the first believers were called followers of the way because in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. To point people to Jesus is to point them to the truth. You know, Truth is in short supply in our world today. And as time goes on and Jesus' return gets closer, the Bible tells us that deception will run rampant, even creeping into the churches and affecting how people view the Bible. And that doesn't mean anything can diminish the truth of God's word, but many are distorting things to the point where even sincere believers find it hard to discern the truth. So how in the world are people who don't know Jesus ever going to recognize the truth when so many so-called Christian churches have abandoned it uh, in a misguided attempt? attempt to be relevant. Because I can tell you as pastors, we can't preach or teach enough messages to help everyone discern the tr truth and respond to lies. We can't resource families fast enough to keep up with the culture, to help them talk with their kids about issues they face or navigate their faith through all the ungodliness around them. As a church, we're going to be faithful to do what we can to stay true to God's word and to equip parents and grandparents to raise 
families that trust God, but we cannot do it in the natural. And that's where prayers for signs and wonders come in, just like the believers prayed in Acts chapter 4. Now, I'm not one to seek after signs, but I've started asking God, God, if we're being true to you in a world full of deception, if we're preaching and teaching the uncompromised truth of your word and equipping people to live effectively for Jesus, if we're refusing to water down your truth for the sake of accommodating the culture, then God, confirm what's going on in our church with such powerful works that people know that it's not us and we can only point them to you. So would you join me in a prayer something like this? God, if your Holy Spirit is truly working through us, then we're asking you to confirm your word and reveal your power in such extraordinary, undeniable, miraculous ways that there is no other explanation except that God is with us. Leave no doubt that you are up to something good in our church. And when people around us are looking for truth in life, but are confused by what they see and hear from churches that have abandoned the truth, show them by your supernatural power that they can find true life in the God we serve. Let people be drawn to this church because they see you working among us and they can come and hear the truth and experience your power for themselves. God, do such mighty things that no person could ever get the glory, but only Christ. Lord, as we remain true to your word and faithful to spread the good news, Confirm that message by powerful signs that point people to the only way to true life. Your son, Jesus. Amen. And I'll see you at Fresh Wind.